And we're back with some more oxygen not included on... Well, what are we playing on? Badlands? Yes, max difficulty Badlands, but with care packages. Now today, the first thing I'm going to get doing is I want to get this gold volcano up and running. We've already got the first one, or is it over here, up and running. I am just going to replicate this down the other end. That's all we're really going to be doing to start off with. This should only take five minutes. Due to some minor mistakes, I accidentally dug up the wrong tile and activated the volcano early. So Chidi got a little bit scalded, like only a tiny bit. How are you doing, Chidi? You're uh, now... Yeah, so so they lost a little bit of hit points. Uh, they're, they're, they're in bed now healing up and that Pip is looking at them very judgmentally. But all in all, it went quite well. It's all up and running. We just got to finish off putting the liquid in and then I'm going to chuck in the outflow pipe. Uh, we just may need to make sure there's enough water in here that this doesn't spike in temperature too much and the uh, when the volcano erupts again. Right, all done and finished. Though there's a minor complication here. Normally I've tested these with using oxygen as the atmosphere or hydrogen. I've never left a bunch of natural gas in there before I've sealed it up. But, hey, let's, let's see if this works. If it works, great. If it doesn't, I'll just have to break it open again. Not the not the worst thing in the world. Oh, uh, in this instance, I vacuumed it here. I also vacuumed at the steam room before I turned it on. In the previous one, I never vacuumed at the steam room because I forgot. Though, it yeah, there it is. There's a blob of oxygen, 18.5 kilos. So it bounces around a bit, though it doesn't seem to have affected the running of the machine. So, yeah, I think I'm going to call that a success seems you don't even have to vacuum it out. Well, if there's one gas in there, I don't know what happens if there's multiple gases in there. If there's multiple gases in there, things might get a little bit more complicated. Anyway, that's two gold volcanoes tapped into. With that done, next up comes even more vents and geysers that I need to be managing. I need to start tapping into all of them now and taking advantage of the bounties they provide. So we've got a salt water geyser over here. I should have, I should have opened this up the moment I found it, but I was lazy. So we're going to break this open now and make a nice big liquid storage tank for it. As you can see, not exactly giant big, big brain plays here. We're just going to make a big tank and let it all store up. Well, we'll find some good uses for that salt water later. Ooh, new printables. I keep forgetting to tap on these. Uh, let's see, Paku I would like. You know, I think we are going to take the Paku, but I don't know if we can get them into a water tank conveniently. Our water tank is not, uh, it's not an easily accessible area. You know what? We'll give it a try, though. I think if we just extend this by... Wrong button. If we extend this by one tile, they maybe might fall down here and then take a left. Maybe not. <laughs> it's worth giving it a go to see if it happens anyway. Yeah, I, worst case scenario, we can always just build some plastic traps and then move them down there manually. I really should have planned ahead for this better. I've just never really integrated Paku into my playstyle, uh, though that water tank is actually getting kind of low. Yeah, see, we're going to have to tap into a lot more power and start running aqua tuners. Uh, ah, yeah, they're just going to flop out. So in that case, let's get ourselves some fish traps. Did you know you can place fish traps on the ground? Just like that. And you can catch fish even though they're not in water. And there we go. Oh, oh, some of them are moving through the air. I That's, that's probably bugged. We should really get down a fish drop off just so we can, uh, we can dump them down here. I think we can safely drop off all aquatic creatures there. Uh, that should mean all of them get dragged down there. Oh, it's four, five, six, and eh, one more seven. I think there's eight of them. Yeah, we've slowly got them all down there, though. I think they're probably going to classify as overcrowded, considering how little water we have. What I don't get is why that, that cat is just sitting there watching all the fish flop about and do nothing about it. Uh, maybe I've seen too many cartoons, but I'm just, I really expect that that cat to just go yum 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 and just chow down on the fish. Uh, that may be just my childhood upbringing in the cartoons I watched. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's get back to, where were we? Ah uh, yes, down here and finishing off our little water tank. Right, that will be our next set of water, which should hopefully keep us going for a long time. Uh, after that, I'm thinking, yeah, I think we should maybe tap into another volcano. Wait, no, no, no. I can't, I can't do the volcano just yet. I was thinking about either this volcano anyway, or... There's two more over here. Well, I think that one exists. I can't... Mm, should we dig in there and find out? But no, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to finish off the industrial sauna. Now, it's been pointed out to me, and I kind of realized it myself afterwards. This thing is stupidly oversized for our purposes. Normally, you build them this size because you're going to be doing, say, refining lots of copper, gold, iron ore, and steel. Well, refined metal-wise, we get 
150 tons of iron because we just find it lying around the map. So we don't really need to refine the iron ore. So gold amalgam, we don't have any of that in this map. So there's no need to refine any gold amalgam. The only thing else we've got is copper ore and steel. So the only thing we're going to be refining in here is copper ore and steel. As well as that, we're not running petroleum boilers, so we won't be putting them in here. We're not running natural gas, so we won't be putting that in here. We have a huge industrial sauna, and I can't think of what to put in here. Now, we are going to get into ethanol production, um, because, yeah, I, I want to give it a try. I want to try all the stuff I've never really, you know, went hardcore into before. So over here, we have a bunch of pips, and we have some trees. There's been some changes to how these generate seeds. So as you harvest wood from them, there's a chance they'll generate another acorn. So you don't need to just get pips at them anymore. They can, from harvest, give you more seeds. Well, that's what I've discovered recently from the wiki. It, it was in, turns out it was in some patch notes. We're going to probably have to put in a big wild forest somewhere because we don't have the polluted water to run it. But we're definitely getting into ethanol production so we can do poke shells, so we can do steel, so we can turn all of that iron into steel. I want to refine all the iron on this map into steel possible technically realistic not sure but anyway let's uh, let's set up the automation on top here anyway just so that these steam turbines turn on when necessary and recycle the steam from whatever heat we're going to throw in here i think i'm going to chuck some aqua tuners in here maybe and stuff like that maybe centralize all my cooling out of one spot that might be an interesting way to approach it this is going to be the simplest system imaginable anytime these uh the steam in here goes above 140 c the four steam turbines above it will activate that's just it except for this one over here which is hooked up to the aqua tuner that one actually you know what we'll make you 140 as well why not and that way we should keep the whole place fairly chill now when it comes to our geothermal power over here we have the best timing in the world because both of these went into dormancy shortly after we turned it on however the next activity on one is 16.9 for the major and 5.7 for the minor so give it another 30 40 cycles or so and we can finally turn this on yeah, it's been a wait. Anyway, that was fairly quick. Let's have a quick glance over here and see if we could put in a geothermal on this side as well. This would probably need to be a bigger one, though, because there's two nice volcanoes there. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, there's one thing I have to take care of first. I've run out of food for my hatches. I'm, I have just saw people bringing stone from around the map. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's not going around anymore. We need to get more igneous rock in here and more granite. Otherwise, I'm going to be doing an awful lot of labor on the side, which I'd prefer to avoid. No, no more dupes. No more dupes. We've got 16. We've got 16 and we're fine. We will just reject that. Uh, skills wise, how's our new recruit doing? Frankie's got that. They're not ready to be promoted yet, but we're going to give Frankie their real name, their, their actual good place name. Say hello to Donkey Doug. Yes, it's, it's Donkey Tug. I mean, that name had to go in there at some point, as well as Bad Janet. We have to get a, a Bad Janet in at one point, but they'll, they'll have to be flatulent or something just to make it uh, more appropriate. Oh, you know what? I think I'll just stick in a few more fish traps to, up here. Reason being, at some point we'll have more of those uh, Paku spawn, and I, I'd, I'd like to have somewhere to dump them. Yeah, overcrowded. Mm, I should maybe get around to putting more clean water in there just so that they don't get overcrowded. But I'm going to need a lot of power for that. You know what? We have plenty of coal already hooked up to the grid. Why don't we make ourselves some clean water? That might be a project to get started on now instead. I think the simplest thing to do is we don't need that much clean water. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll desalinate some water, we'll dump it into a tank, and then we'll just cool it down with our existing aqua tuner. I've got one running, so I don't really see any need to modify anything. All I'll do is just... Uh... Yeah, okay, I'll take care of this first. Right, that that's all replaced. We've got new tanks in, and we've got... God, so much polluted water just lying there. I I may need to uh, uh, I may need to submerge them in a layer of something just to keep them off gasting constantly. Though that might start getting popped your jumps and overpressurization. No, I'll worry about that later. I'll worry about that later. First, we'll get some uh, some cool water going on. Uh, yeah, I am I am really happy with how that liquid tank has worked or that uh, storage tank system has worked out. I have not missed it ever backing up once. It's never backed up in me at all, and I don't think it ever will. This here is going to be a glorious mess. I'm not even going to try and make this a clean thing. This is just going to be some batch processing to tide us over until we get to later in the game and we have so much power we can just throw power at problems and not worry about it. So this is a temporary solution. We're going to do a batch processing of some clean water and then pump it over when the time comes. So desalinate, dump in here and chill down. And yes, it's going to be messy. I need to get that cooling loop and extend it on. Mm, let me think about this for a second. Right, so this cooling loop, we're going to plug it into this and it should continue around here and go through this area. After we filled it with some hot, clean water that we've desalinated. Um, 
Yes, this is going to be a wonderful mess. Which reminds me, I should probably put in some sort of automation shutoff to make sure that the desalinator doesn't keep running forever. Uh, yeah, we'll put in just a quick hydro sensor. We'll throw that down there, and we'll just hook that up to that. Boom. We'll turn that off when the hydro sensor, when the water gets to that point, and then we'll just maybe deconstruct it. Oh, you know what? This is going to be such a mess. Who cares? All right, the water is getting desalinated. The power for this, I'm not even plugging into the mains. I just, uh, I had some cola rays lying around. I thought, yeah, let's, let's just throw them onto the problem. Uh, okay, so the cola rays are taking care of the power for this section. Then we just need to add in the cooling. So this is cooled down to, ooh, that's actually a little bit chilly. Maybe we should let's make that 10 degrees. Yeah, 10 degrees is fine. So... All we do now is, thanks, thankfully, we do have access to the pliers tool. So we can just split that off and boom. This will, of course, cause the cause our cooling loop to get a little bit warm, but it should be fine. It's not like it's getting that much activity considering how little work we're putting in down here. So at the end of the day, we'll end up with a tank of water that's about, what, how many tiles are we going to have in there? Uh, it's 18, say, and another half. So about 20, 20 or so tiles of clean water that'll be cooled down to about 10 degrees. We'll dump that into our liquid tank and that should keep us going for a while. Though I might accidentally make a bunch of... Mm, I'm worried about turning a whole bunch of the Paku into those uh, frozen variants. What are the ones? Gulp fries? If you cool them down to below 5 degrees. No, no. No, no. We're above 5. It's fine. Okay. That should tide us over on the waterfront once that's finished processing. In the meantime, let's get more geothermal underway. I want all the geothermal on this map. So we're going to put in a ladder system over here and at least get a look at this. Though I might want to clean out some of the area first because we're going to have to sweep up a lot of hot obsidian. Damn it, that edge of the map is really annoying to work with. Yeah, there's 1300 degree obsidian here. So what I'm going to want to do is core out anything that might potentially get in the way, then get rid of all this, uh, this hot obsidian and make sure it's uh, imported down to our industrial sauna just for disposal. I, of course, immediately forgot that I'd run out of food for my hatches, so I'm just uh, doing a little bit of retrofitting here. We're going to scoop out all of the resources along here. We're going to dump them down to... Where was it? Ooh, if I misalign this, I want to drop them down to this tile, I suppose. Ooh, I would want to make a few minor modifications, but we should be able to dump most of the resources down here and do pretty much the same thing we did before. Oh, and we've also got more blueprints. Oh god, another rancher. You know what, I'm going... I'm going max ranching this round, so yeah, let's just get another rancher. <laughs> it's a bad idea. I've already got too many uh, dupes as it is, so yeah, we have now have another one. Uh, it's fine. Uh, they can join Donkey Doug on running around the inside of the base. It'll be okay. Once they're finished all their training, we'll send them, uh, we'll send them out into the real world. But for the time being, let's get some more food in for our hatches. We're going to drop all the resources down there, then we'll shuffle them just across a little bit using an auto sweeper and then once we delete a few blocks we can drop them all right down there i may get a little bit of overloading on my wires again doing this much movement around but it is the fastest way of getting resources from one place to the other dupes are okay but they're not quite this quick a little bit of past the parcel all the way along until we get to the end uh, I, i'm trying not to turn them all on at the same time otherwise i'm going to completely blank out my power grid well the power grid in the base and i'd rather not burn that out just yet it's all ending up down here soon we will turn this on and uh, dump it down into our base we'll have to do a little bit of minor modifications there to allow it in but that should give us more than enough food to keep all our ranch or hatches going for quite some time all right that's enough messing about we've got most of the resources out of there we'll just uh, delete that tile there boom then we can hook up this and then we should start dropping down the... How much resources we got there? Yeah, we got more than enough resources to keep our keep our hatches fed for a long, long time to come. That's working right. Yeah, all of these are getting filled up now. How's our conveyor rails looking? All our conveyor rails are fully saturated again. All our hatches are going to be fed and that's going to cut down on labor requirements. And yes, I still haven't chosen a blueprint. Um, hmm. No, no, we're good. We'll just reject all of those. I don't even want the hatch we have... We have too many hatches as it is. Those stone hatches down here, they'll eventually starve to death, but at the moment they're just eating all of the leftover minerals I left lying around. It, it's just giving me even more coal. What's our coal up to? 434 tons. Ooh, not as t not as high as I thought it would be. We must be burning a lot of it. Uh, with all of that done, now, now we can finally get into doing the second geothermal setup. Well, just about. Okay, minor problem. We're missing a volcano. 
The neutronium's there. The volcano is not. Uh, once is that? There's liquid magma back there. Oh my god! Is there a volcano on the opposite side of the map then? Yeah. For those of you who don't know, the map is actually just a a cylinder. So, for example, if uh, near the space biome where there's no neutronium edges, they can actually build, if they're standing on the far left-hand side, they can potentially build a building on the far right-hand side, just just because of the way the, the map is engineered. Well, there's only one volcano there, and that's really close to space. I don't know if that's worth tapping into. We might want to maybe find another source for our next geothermal plant. Looking around, I've got... Mm, the options don't look amazing, actually. We've got one volcano here, two, three... There's potentially a fourth there, but I'm going to assume that one also got deleted because it's so close to the edge of the map. So with that's yeah, three definite ones. Then we've got a fourth one over here and then a fifth one over here. And then that's that's it. I think that's all the volcanoes I got available to me. So I suppose we just continue on with this one. This sea is close and uh, yeah, we've already started digging it out. So why not? Right. We at least have a volcano to work with. That's not terrible. Uh, yeah, we've got a major volcano. We can dump that into something. And... Thankfully, we were able to core that just enough, though the temperature in there is extremely toasty. 700, 400, 500. Down here, it's actually really, really toasty. I forgot to insulate this immediately, and there's there's actually magma just there on the opposite side of that. So, some uh, quick insulated tiles to make sure none of that leak, heat leaked out. Though, a bunch of the stuff that fell down there is still pretty toasty hot. And normally, disposing of that stuff is a nightmare. But, we have one of these. So, all we have to do is set this to sweep only and make sure all the hot stuff ends up in here. So, granite, igneous rock, obsidian, and abyssalite, all of those. And they're all going to be sweep only. Copy, paste. Dip them all in here. We don't care. That's so... It can handle all the heat and they'll slowly but surely get taken down to reasonable levels. Uh, just a nice way of dealing with this. It took me a while to figure out how to deal with these when I first encountered them, but now... Yeah, now it's just it's supposed to free power. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to rip out this. I want some space, so I'm going to dump all of that uh, ethanol. I'm going to dump it all into these liquid tanks over here. Quick coal generator on the side to power it. God, coal just so ridiculously handy. Which reminds me, just set those so we're not wasting power. That'll get rid of a lot of that. Uh, how are we doing on the geothermal front on the left-hand side? Oh, something's activated. Probably, yeah, the minor volcanoes come online. Well, whatever. When's the major one come online? Dormant. 1.1 cycles, and then we gotta wait until it actually activates. I am so looking forward to turning that on. It will just, it will simplify power entirely. And we can finally start using those batteries for something good. At the time being, they're not going to really get much because those coal generators aren't configured to help them out. I've also got a bunch of level 4 dig commands up down here just to, to core the place out. There's no point not doing it. We've got the, we've got the spare dig power, so why not? I also probably want to get ready to prep that one for geothermal, that one for geothermal. Uh, where's the other two? Yeah, there's a, another geothermal over there. We might as well just plug them all in. I might want to leave one available so that it's more convenient to do a regular smelter. Though if I was going to do that, it was probably this one. Actually, no, we will leave that one there. That one there we can turn into our regular smelter. It's nice and close to the top of the map. It should be convenient. The rest of them, though, we're all going to hook up geothermal plants to them. All of this sweeping is getting us an awful lot of hot rocks. Uh, these hot rocks are all being transferred over to the industrial sauna. And the industrial sauna is actually generating a chunk of power. All of the batteries down here that we built, all full. Every single last one of them. We're running entirely off the uh, the hot rocks we've dumped in here. Oh, well, we also have some steel running. That's, uh, that's not hurting either. That's still running through. We're going to run out of lime, though, shortly. I think we're almost out of lime. Yeah, we're down to, down to about 100 kilos of lime from over two and a half tons. Oh, well, it happens. Uh, and I think we've got more oil by them, though, we still have to demolish, do we? Yeah, we've got another chunk of oil biome over here and another chunk of oil biome over here. Once we demolish those, we'll have all the fossil, but we're in no rush just yet. Once this is done, I just want more power hooked into the grid as soon as possible. It just it takes me so long to spin up. Ran out of recording time last night, so I just did a little bit of side work once it had gotten too late to be uh, to be shouting my head off. <laughs> well, shouting my head off in the middle of the night. You don't like to uh, to mess with your neighbours. But I, did a, I sealed all this in here. Uh, we've got the bulk of the build in. But there is a the problem of vacuuming out all the gases in here, which, yeah, they're a little toasty. They're, okay, exceedingly toasty, which is why this whole place is getting overheat damage. Even the, the coal generators that provide power are getting overheat damage. But we're, we're slowly but surely venting the whole place out. You know what we'll do? We will deconstruct that for now. That gas pressure has gotten low enough now that if I do replace that, it should remain, stop overheating. One of the uh, wonderful things about... Ah, the game mechanics is the less gas pressure there's around you, the slower the temperature transfer. So if I rebuild this, 
See that one there? Oh. Damn it. Maybe that happened. I put it one tile to the left. Uh, that one is... Nope, still overheating. Never mind. I take it all back. Uh, we'll just uh, we'll quickly vacuum out the last of this, hopefully. There we go. Now that the gas pressure in here is low enough, there's no real heat transfer. So I can deconstruct the gas pump, reconstruct it, and it loses all its heat. And the fresh one doesn't have to get... will not get any heat transferred to it. Because there's too little gas pressure to transfer any reasonable amount of heat. And done. Problem solved. Uh, I don't know... Oh. Coal generators, I forgot about those. Maybe I should have made those out of steel and not maybe outputted the giantly hot exhaust gases right beside it. What have I done to that area? Oh, damn, okay, that is toasty. Ooh, that reminds me. It was something anti-toasty we were doing over here. Yes, this is the water tank we were making. Down to 18 degrees already. You know what, that is... That's perfect. It's all done. Hmm. Uh, in that case, we shall hook these back up to together again, and then we can disconnect this. And that should empty out the cooling loop. Now, the, the only reason we can do that is we actually have a liquid storage tank built onto this, so we're able to extend and chop off the cooling loop as needs be. Uh, what we can do now, though, is we can hook up the power to this. This one here, uh, a long, long time ago, there was a bunch of water up here in this old area, so I'd run a, run a pipe down, so I just ran the pipe almost directly across to plug into it, and that goes all the way down to our cool water tank. Which, how much water we got left? We're down to, Jesus, one layer of water there and 285 kilos in the second tile. Yeah, um, this, okay, all of this I should point out was not exactly entirely necessary. We could have gotten away with just using ice plates. I could have just dumped a bunch of temperature shift plates made of ice in there. We have plenty of ice around the map. I've even got a bunch of water over here I could be tapping into. This whole biome is melting. Even though the abyssalite's not broken, it's still conducting through somehow just enough heat or maybe I'm, I'm letting something in from somewhere else I'm not sure but this appears to be melting for no reason that I can determine I mean because the magma is still not solidifying abyssalite not the perfect insulator you would imagine also one of the reasons I built uh, insulated tiles all the way around this even though we had abyssalite areas I could have left in one thing I like about this game is trying to figure it well I like a lot of things to get this game I suppose but uh, one of the things that always brings me back is this annoying scenario here, I want to mine out that tile. Now, when I mine that out, this could potentially start just spewing lava, la magma immediately, which could be problematic because I have no way of getting in from the top anymore. So what I kind of want to do is just sort of seal off the bottom, but I need to sort of foolproof this so that if I do mess up, I don't accidentally pour a bunch of magma all the way down to the bottom of the map. Ooh, which reminds me, I'm going to replace those tiles. If I do pour some magma down here, that's fine. I don't want to break the vacuum seal. But I don't want it boiling that crude oil. So you're always trying to preempt the horrible mistakes you make and, oh. Yeah, look at that, rising pressure. If I have removed that tile now, there's a potential that we could get that. Oh, so we wait until after this happens, crack it open, and then re really get in the get in the analysis and get out of there before it erupts again. Yeah, I think that sounds like a plan. All right, the pressure rising thing has gone away. We're going to dig that tile out, and we're going to have a look and see if... Ah! No. 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 <laughs> right, um... Well, uh, crap. <laughs> we'll make that, uh, uh, we should probably make that a really high priority, like uh, emergency style. Yeah, we're going to have sour gas in here, aren't we? Ah, yeah, we'll make all of that emergency style. <laughs> uh, Judge, what I want you to do is, yeah, let's, let's put a quick tile there. We'll also make that emergency style. <laughs> It did it stop vibrating. I thought we were good. Oh, okay, the magma went that side. That's fine. That's fine. You know what? I think I think we just got it at the tail end. I think we got it at the tail end. I think we're good. Okay. Okay. God damn it, that was so dumb. Uh no, well, cancel the analysis. I don't care. I, I have no idea what the magma content on that is, and I don't care. That is fine. We will finish this off, and we're going to get out of here. God. <laughs> I seriously thought that was going to be an enormous mess. Just, uh, yeah, wonderful stuff. Anyway, in the, the background, before I headed off last night, I hired one more dupe. I knew I shouldn't have hired the dupe, but, well, I mean, it was Meep. And they had plus seven ranching, so I was like, "That's a sign, right?" They had they had so much ranching skill, and we have been I have been targeting a lot of ranching, so yeah, that's three extra ranchers combined with the 
two ranchers. We already have three ranchers. We already have. We're going to have six specialized ranchers, like heavy duty ranchers, which reminds me, I think uh, Donkey Dog is about to come online. Yeah, we're going to be able to ranch all the critters. So I figure the plan is ranch an absolute crap ton of poke shells. Now we'll do starvation farming on them. So we'll just have sorry, say a breeder pen, breed a whole bunch of them up. Same thing you do was with the uh, with shovels, but we want all the poke shells, just every single one of them. Which reminds me, we should get Donkey Doug. Oh, we have to rename Max and Meep. We have renamed Max to Brent, and then Meep shall be renamed to. Oh, I got an idea. Meep shall henceforth be known as Pillboy. <laughs> if anyone hasn't uh, figured out yet, this is all characters from a, play, a show called The Good Place that I enjoy, and I just thought I'd, uh, I'd dump all the characters in here. That's where I'm getting all the names from. But this is finished. What was the length on this again? This was 11 tiles. Yeah, 11 tiles to the drop, 10 tiles to, yeah, from the in. Mm, yep. To be honest, when I'm doing these, I, I keep having to zip back and forth to like measure these and go, yeah, that's 11 from there to there. To, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just to make sure I've done it right. I take screenshots of my old designs and then uh, yeah, keep them on a, a separate screen so I can keep an eye on them. Yeah, I think that's done. Now that that's all finished, we can double layer this sucker just to make sure no heat leaks out. And I might want to double layer up the sides, but I'll yeah worry about that a little bit later. For the time being, we have to put on all of the steam turbines here. We're going to need, uh, for this only one volcano, we'll probably just put in three steam turbines and see how that works out. Because of some slightly better planning this time around, and I'm going to go with the word slightly, we've managed to get uh, this just sort of tacked on almost neatly. If I could have moved that back another two squares, we could have done that just a little bit nicer. Oh, and Why does that look like there's gas in there? Yep, there's gas in there. There's sorry. God damn it. You know, if I broke in... Hmm. If I broke in there and deleted that tile, it would help the sour gas start to evaporate out. Do I risk it? Yeah, I kind of have to. I just... Mm. I don't think it would make that much of a difference, but I do want to be able to go in and service that place at some point in the future. Um, If we start to see that thing erupt, we need to get the hell out of Dodge as fast as possible. This is dumb. This is dumb, but it just, it, it will bug me otherwise. No. Pressure's building. How much time do we have? Come on. Move it, move it, move it, move it, move it. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Who's on the errand? Unreachable? How is it unreachable? Oh, that tile's there. You know what? I've, I've risked too much already. We're not... Ah, wrong hotkey. We've reached, risked way too much already. We are just going to get that high priority and closed up. That was me being too optimistic. I can always break in from this side and expose the the edge of this to vacuum. It's fine. Not going to worry too much. Though, is this going to mess up the whole system? Oh. Let me think for a minute. I have no idea what leaving sour gas will do to this system. It's always been tested in a vacuum. Now, I could risk it. I'd rather not. What I'm going to do is try and break in here, immediately brick this up. And if I can brick this up in time, I can stop the magma from flowing out. Then I can do some maintenance from the inside and remove those two tiles. My duplicates will have to do a little bit of a magma dip, but it should be fine. Okay, Jason, what are you going to do? Maybe, uh... Yep, yeah, you can take care of that. What are you going to do now? Oh, you're going to deconstruct that tile. Well, maybe someone else should go and build that in an emergency. Oh, Janet is on the way. Perfect. And that should start letting the gas at that end. We can vacuum out the gas down this bottom end as well also. Come on. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Yep, there we go. Oh, thank jeepus. Okay, the rest of the gas will get sucked out that way and all I have to do is vacuum out down here and then we can do some modifications later. Eh, sorry about this. It's just, uh, yeah. Things happen. Where, where did that sour gas even come from? There should have... Like, there was no oil in here. I'm, you know what? Don't care. Problem has been solved for now. Oh, it's probably some of hot rocks down here. There was... Yeah, there are still some volcanic rocks lying about the place. Some oil must have touched... Yeah, never mind. Never mind. Uh, let's uh, let's get this fixed up, shall we? I swear, almost every build has some horrible mistakes in it. I think that's the joy of this game, is it always finds ways to make you mess up. Uh, uh, that will vacuum that out. This is slowly but surely draining out that corner piece. I would go up and dig more out, but I'd have to make an airlock and a liquid lock and all sorts of stuff to make sure everyone can get out there. New printables. I'm not I'm not bothered. We have so many ranchers right now that uh, 
until they're all skilled up and ready to go. Which reminds me, is Donkey Doug? Yeah, Donkey Doug is ready to go. They can be immediately... Oh, damn it. I hit the wrong one. It was supposed to be exosuit training. Never mind, we'll, we'll scrub Donkey Doug again later. Well, I... I'm still risking way too much in here, but I, I moved in here so I could grab some of this gas out. If we get this done really quickly, I think... I think we can get this back to a vacuum. <laughs> I don't know why I care so much, but I really would like that. Well, okay, I do know why I care, would care so much. I don't want this messing up. The problem with volcanoes, this is one of the reasons why uh, dealing with volcanoes is so tricky. If any gases get in there, they superheat and they start heating everything up all over the place and it makes maintenance terrible. And plus, I don't know what will happen if gas gets in here if it clog up the system. If it does clog up the system, well, good luck fixing it without dipping yourself into an enormous amount of magma. So maybe put in a few gas pumps. I'll put in another gas pump maybe over here. Actually, yeah, right about there. Uh, that way I can sweep up the mess from it, because there will be gas piping coming out of it. I can sweep up the mess from that on the side without it falling into any of the magma. I've also stuck in a little, uh... Where is it? Yeah. I've also stuck in a little block here to make sure that no, none of the magma flows down. Oh, cheaty. No, no. Come on, chief. That's, that's... You just... No. Just stop that. Can, can we mop any of the rest of it? Yeah, I think we can maybe, if we get lucky, we might be able to mop up all of this and then Chidi can get in there and examine the volcano. No, kind of worked. I think Chidi might be able to stand there without getting scalded. We'll have to see. Uh, uh, priorities make all of these level sixes. Let's get this whole system sorted out. I'm surprised it hasn't erupted yet. Really? This is one of those times where you really would like the analysis to be done already. Okay, this worked out. Fine, when's the next one? Idle erupts in 32 cycles. Oh, we have all the time in the world. 32, 13.2, sorry, 13.2 cycles. Um, yeah, time to vacuum this entire place out. I think we'll be good. Okay, all finished, all sealed up. We're not going to have any magma escaping anytime today. Now, down here, I'm going to learn from my past mistakes and... Okay, I'm going to try and learn from my past mistakes. We've got this area almost filled up and we're going to put in a little bit of a liquid lock here, but it's going to serve a dual function. I knew we were going to liquid lock this area so we can vacuum it out. We're also going to make sure this is the vacuum joint seal for power. Same thing. Oh, I should probably break it through the top as well. There we go. So we'll, once we vacuum this out, we can also seal in the joint plate so I don't have to waste a little plastic pump in there. At the same time, when we were over on the original one here, I am running the power to run all the doors. I like to power the doors in this. You kind of need to to make sure it works perfectly. Well, I've never tested it unpowered. So I'm running it from a power transformer down here plugged into the main spine. For our new version, I thought, why not just stick a large power transformer in there? If we stick a large power transformer in here, it, its heat will generate, it will be sucked up by the steam turbines, and it's just, well, more convenient. We can plug that in, and that can power all the doors. Eh. Well, we'll see how that works out long term. Uh, let's uh, let's skip this forward a bit until we get this all vacuumed out and ready to start running it. Oh, and I got to put water in here as well, don't I? Right, all vacuumed out. We'll just seal her up, and we're going to fill her with water. Now, for the water filling. I'm just going to tap into this down here, the salt water tank that we've had for god knows how long. I've put in even a little coal generator here right beside it, though that reminds me to put that up to 199, uh, say 1960. And uh, then, and that will pump in the water into here, I believe I've just left it so it just needs to be hooked up. There we go. And that should start dumping water in that section, so I'm going to have to pay attention to that. And then once it's full, uh, that will be this system prepped and we just need to wait on the magma. So let's go over to the other side and see how our other one is doing. And here's one we made earlier. Right, time to get this fired up. What's that set to? 250? Yeah, 250 should be fine. Temperature in here. If the temperature is... Actually, we can't really set this too well. We want to say 140 to start. Ooh, 140. Temperature is above 140? Hmm. Now that should inject heat across here, which should then get injected into this tile. You can't put two temperature shift plates touching each other. Well... If this was the temperature shift plate here, there'd be no temperature transfer. That's why the diamond is present. The diamond helps transfer it across. Though, mm, I'm not sure if this is going to be enough to get this working fast enough. Oh, there we go. We finally get some steam. Now that the steam's popping up, that should help the temperature transfer even faster. And there goes the salt. Perfect. You. Let's make you 300 degrees, shall we? Why don't you take a nibble on some more magma? So, oh my god, it's 500 degrees in there already. Never mind. That's uh, plenty good to go. You make it, uh, actually no, there's no point making that any higher. We'll just uh, give this a few minutes to spin up and hopefully we should start seeing some power. Hmm, you know what? This is way too slow. The bottleneck here, like, 
The temperature from this side gets whisked across by this temperature shift plate into that steel tile. Then that steel tile has to transfer through to the steel door. And that's the sort of the bottleneck. And then from there, it gets transferred into the diamond window tile. But, well, no. Once it's in the steel door, this uh, temperature shift plate is ripping it out diagonally. I should really maybe put a temperature shift plate right there, and it would help transfer the heat across from these two sides. And I could theoretically do that from outside the box. So, I'm not sure I need to. You know what? I'm going to let this spin up normally and see if it works. Assuming this all works out as intended, which it should, we shouldn't need to do that. This is just a case of when you're firing it up at f first, the amount of temperature you have to inject is a lot more than you normally need to just keep these running. Yeah, my impatience is getting to me. I'm going to stick in a temperature shift plate and see what happens. This, uh, this, this little left angle thingy, probably not my brightest idea. Let's see, can we get at that? Now, can we build one in there without having to enter the box is the question. Unreachable. Damn it, how can I get that in without breaking the seal? Hmm. There's got to be a way around this somehow. Uh, do we mind if we let gas in? I don't even think we mind if we let gas in there, do we? You know what? I don't think we mind if we let gas in there at all. We're going to... We're going to deconstruct that quickly stick in a temperature shift plate and then immediately seal that back up again before it gets too toasty around here. How toasty? Well, it's going to get toasty really quick because that is a temperature shift plate and it's going to be whisking heat out of these things at, well, at an ordinary rate and that's 400 degrees. Uh, yeah, let's immediately start queuing up this sucker. You can be an emergency. Come on, dupes, move. I'd like to have someone building that block before the temperature shift plate is even finished. Come on, there we go. And that one can keep building it, even though the, the area is technically sealed off now. Boom. Okay, now what we should see is a massive injection of heat over the side. There we go, would you look at that. Massive heat injection. That is exactly what we wanted. Ah, finally. Okay, steam turbine starting to come online. Cooling loop, still fully operational. Power production, minuscule so far. That's set to 140. I think we can crank this up a bit. Let's go for 160 and see how she handles that. Temperature-wise over here, this is sort of, uh, this is where we're drawing temperature from. It's sort of like the minimum temperature we're going to pull, at, or how cold we're going to let the igneous rock get before we're effectively saying you're useless to us anymore. 300 degrees... I think that's that's reasonable. We're still pulling in enough heat. I'll have to do some tweaking with this just to be sure and try and maximize the lifespan of the magma and try and get this to work as efficiently as possible. But I think for three, we'll leave it at 300 for the time being and see what happens. Also, I might want to seal that up because that's dumping heat. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, you can see where that heat's being dumped out. Yeah, we need to uh, brick that up. That was my bad. We'll make that an emergency <laughs> priority too. We'll get that bricked up and then uh, I'll maybe seal in a few more pieces as well, just to be 100% safe. Right, system operation. Ooh, game is saving, perfect timing. But uh, the system is now fully operational. Um, we haven't called any, ah yes, occasionally you see we're summoning in new heat, but very slowly compared to the amount of power we're generating. This should last a long time, or we should be able to run all five of these flat out if I've done this right. The question is, have I done it right? God damn it. No, 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 no. I've made the mistake. Uh, you'll know all the igneous rock is getting squeezed out of here. The same mechanic that forces it in here is, is dumping it down into this corner. Ah, that's why the temperature shift plate doesn't go there. I sh if I was going to put a temperature shift plate, I should have put it up there. Could I still do that? You know what? I'm just going to do a quick fix here. I have no idea how, but they're able to construct a normal tile diagonally. Oh, yeah, that seals that up. We can set this back to normal, so... Yeah, what was we said? 300. We can start grabbing in fresh igneous rock there. But will we still be able to get the temperature out as quickly? That's the question. Let's skip, let's skip this forward a couple of cycles. All right. It's stabilized. We now have it pretty much the same temperature it needs to be all the way along. It's not, eh, it's not perfectly balanced. Let's crank up the temperature to about, say, 190. That's about uh, as far as we'll want it. That, that seems to be giving us a decent amount of power. We're getting about what? 380 out of each one of those. Okay, it's not as good as running a petroleum boiler, let's say, but for geothermal, we don't do it because it's easy, we do it because it's hard. Unfortunately, the eight tons of igneous rock that was in here got spit at the side, so I have dumped that, I've had that transported over to the industrial brick, uh, or the industrial sauna. It's, yeah, it's slowly giving off its temperature in here somewhere. I don't know, it's in one of those piles. But yeah, I think that all worked out quite well. Now, I'm going to do some work in the background in between episodes, probably to install, well, 
maybe put in a, an, well, we're going to have to fire up this geothermal generator I have as it spins up. We're going to, and I'm probably going to install a couple more geothermal generators off screen. But uh, the moment we start getting into poke shells, that's when we'll cut back in. So yeah, this might be tapped into next time we're back. And yeah, there was a couple more. Well, never mind. Also, I, I'm, I'm not going to be doing an episode on Sunday, namely because I think I need one day off a week because this was taking... T- this was taking too much time. I, I could kept feeling like I was scrambling to get out the door, so I want to try and uh, get the episodes out in a more reasonable manner. Get like 30, 35 minute episodes, solid ones, with uh, lots where lots gets done. And I think we got a fair chunk done today. I mean, we got the gold volcano done, and we've got this up here constructed, even despite the sour gas explosion, which is definitely gone. Yes, it's definitely gone. But uh, next episode also, we'll be firing this up also. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, good luck. <laughs>